All right, I just want to look at a couple of different ways that I keep my animals um, safely pinned up and also warm during these winter months that are coming up. And we incorporate a little technology into a whole lot of redneck. So let's take a look here. All right, let's take a look at containing first. Uh, first, the cats. The cats, I've got this. Uh, this is a Retriever brand dog kennel that's a, uh, I believe it's a 5 by 15, I think. And this one came from the dogs. We've got this fenced in backyard. Um, I would say it's roughly maybe a third to a fourth of an acre that's fenced in. And my kids play back here, as you can see. Uh, you can see we've got one little terrier type mix who's uh, kind of an older dog. He was left behind when his family moved. And then under the kids trampoline over there, you can see I've got a white German Shepherd who is uh, laying in the shade. So overall, we've got this little covered area here where we park a lawnmower and it also has their dog houses. We've got... Um, an insulated uh, dog palace and then just a regular igloo more on that in just a minute as far as containment in addition to the fence down here you'll see that I also have this wire that's ran a couple of strands up all the way around the fence and that keeps my little escape artist here from digging under the fence because you can see there's a shock collar on the dog and she can't come to the fence so if she can't come to the fence she can't dig out of the fence so it's kind of an extra safety measure that just keeps them from escaping before we implemented that um, these dogs would dig under over and through any kind of fence that i would put up and it was in a constant state of repair so that's helped a lot and to keep the dogs in and keep my children from letting them out we've got four gates and every one of them has one of these cheap Amazon combination locks with a code that my kids don't know so that we can open the fence. Now let's look at how we keep them warm in the winter. Okay now we'll take a look at staying warm. One thing is the doghouse itself. The dog palace is insulated. Uh, it's got a vent on the front and then another one on the back back here to let air flow through in the summer and then they can be closed up in the winter and then the igloo style dog houses everyone is probably familiar with then what we've got are a heated dog bowl that keeps their water from freezing in the winter and a couple of heat lamps 250 watts each all tied into a heavy duty pigtail with a 12-2 wire that is ran back inside through the window where the cats are going in and out. So let's go inside and look at that. Hey buddy. Okay, so inside here we have that wire coming in and have it ran over here into a Belkin Wemo. And now the Belkin Wemo switch is a very neat device and what it does is I've got it set to turn on those uh, dog heaters as well as the dog bowl whenever the temperature in this area drops below 40 degrees and to turn them off whenever it goes above 43. So as you can see it's not recording the temperature inside this room because that's very different than outside. So it's going off of an app from Weather Underground. And when Weather Underground posts the, temp posts the temperature in this town to be less than 40, then that kicks on. Above 43 it kicks off. And the reason for the gap in there is because if you put it on at 40 and off at 40, then when it's exactly 40 degrees outside, it's going to be tripping on and off and tripping on and off. So you want to put a two or three degree gap in there just to keep it uh, from cutting on and off all the time. Now behind this, since we do have outside electricity, if I unplug this, you'll see that I have wired up um, without a faceplate. Need to put a faceplate on there, but have wired up a uh, GFCI plug, just like what you would find in a bathroom that would cut itself off if uh, there's any kind of short outside in that wiring system. So I don't. 
I don't see any water getting to that enough to create a short, but just as an extra safety factor, I put in an old GFCI switch that I had laying around. All right. Now for these guys, keeping them warm is a little bit different. Um, behind here, I've just got a space heater that is one of the Eden Pure radiant heaters. And these things are designed thermostat controlled so you can set a level um, of what the temperature is. And then also there's a guard here that keeps, uh, it was designed for keeping children from sticking their hands in here. And it doesn't get hot to the point it would burn things. Uh, you can at full power, you can put your hand on here, and this radiant heater is not going to burn your fingers. So I've got this positioned on a bottom shelf, pointing toward their cat tree area where they stay, so it blows directly on them. Now, the flaw with these kind of heaters that have a control panel on it like that is they can't be triggered on and off by um, something like a Wemo switch because all that's going to do is send power to the unit and you still have to come and press a button to turn them on and off. So another option would be to use something like uh, one of these heaters, just a typical shop heater or something like this. These, if you put one of those on a Wemo switch, then as soon as you apply power to it, as long as the physical dials are turned to the on position, then those are going to send power out. And you can see back over there, I have got uh, our little power station blocked off. I have the heater plugged directly into another GFCI plug that I have back behind that wall uh, that I put up to keep the cats from getting to my electrical wires. And then into the other outlet of that GFCI, I have a power strip plugged in to which I keep power on uh, the outside dog fence at all times. And there you can see that's the perimeter dog fence system where you can just, uh, it has a panel where I can come in here and dial in exactly how many feet away I want the dogs to be able to get from the fence. So it's something that can be changed fairly easily if needed. Okay, and then finally inside I have a first generation Amazon Echo device that has now been replaced with a newer model. And this can do manual control of the setup outside um, if, for as many of those Wemo switches as you want to install for your different devices. But I know mine are currently set to run on a schedule based on temperature. If you prefer, you can do things like say, Alexa, turn on the dog heaters. Okay. And she did it. Now if I go outside and look, the dog heater should have just kicked on and the dog bowl should have just kicked on. And then when you want to turn them off, it's Alexa, turn off the dog heaters. Okay. All right, and there we have it. You notice she's a little slow to respond. I think it's because it goes through Alexa and then into the Wemo system uh, and then out to the uh, out to the dogs. So there you have it, manual control or automatic through Alexa, Wemo, and some old redneck shop heaters.